Hello, welcome to Grumpy Old Men. And uh, it's one of those days where I got a lot to do and we're really busy and Steve's got a lot to talk about. I've got a lot to talk about. Thanks for coming. We'll see you next week. Yeah. You've Appreciate been, your attention. You've Thank been you. in pa Panga. I've been in Panga, yeah. I just uh, came back for this. I went to Panga. Oh, you did not. This and feed the turtle, yeah. Well, that's Turtles. But no, I had planned. Turtles much more important. I had planned to come back for this. It's not. It's how I had to do the week because you are a slave to the people you, you, who tell you, okay, your appointments on Saturday at eight a.m. Your appointments at wh whatever. So yeah, I've spent uh, two nights in Panga. I went to get my ninety-day report and uh, get a driver's license. It turned out I was thirty days early for my ninety-day report. <laughs> better early than late. Better early than late. Yes, but. I had, uh, thanks to a, a vlogger named Chris Parker on Retired Working For You, I had all the documents I needed and uh, they still would not give me a license, but they sent me to a friendly driving school where I will be taught how to drive. And Is then that the one about a kilometer from the DLT? I think it's about seven kilometers. It's outside okay. of town. I wonder anyway. if it's the same way I, I did a one. You're, you're doing it sort of legit. I semi legit. I hope so. I hope so, yeah. yeah. I, I did mine a little bit slightly unlegit in that I went there paying more than what you're paying, but I was sort of guaranteed that I would get a license. But oh. I did go to the lectures, did the test. Mm -hmm. the, the, um, you got red, to sort of, green, yellow. Red, and green, then you've got to put your, uh, yeah. your foot on the accelerator and press a button or something. You're yeah. going to fail that. Probably. Uh, yeah. Then, you know, you do the three-point turn and the reverse parking, nailed it. <laughs> and uh, then you sort of sit through these three hours of lectures and they show videos of um, Fast and Furious and sort of explicit <laughs> yeah. uh, videos of emergency situations and dead bodies and yeah. blood flying around. Here's how we drift and, in Thailand. And then the band came out and they're all up dancing and clapping and there's four or five foreigners in the back. What's going on? And then there was the exam. Wait, there's a band? There was a band. You know, if you're going to the same place, you'll experience this. Sing along and... Oh, okay. Probably yeah. driving songs, I don't know. Yeah. And, and yeah, then yeah. Uh, we, uh, what happened then? Uh, the, the exam, which is uh, 30 questions, uh, multiple choice, A, B, C, D. And they were very kindly provided me with an English translation. Which and so it. the questions like, I mean, this isn't, but this will give you an idea of what it was like. Um, you're 60 metres away from the car in front. Uh, how many seconds before do you have to brake or something like that? And you know, A, um, shellfish, B, <laughs> durian, C, <laughs> you, your mother. It, it's <laughs> like the answers just didn't quite work. Yeah. And she came over to me and said, don't worry, I'll do it for you. Aww. Anyway, the next day I went down to the DLT in Phuket and they issued me with my license. Feel safe on the roads, people. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This is who you're sharing that lane with. You see a blue Mercedes. Is. Yeah. Keep <laughs> away from it. <laughs> I'm actually quite a good driver. Tuck and roll, tuck and roll. <laughs> you can attest, <laughs> up. you can say things like, Tim is a very good driver. Tim is a very good driver. Okay. I, I'm only going for the motorcycle. Thanks, oh. Thank <laughs> oh. Psych! Uh, I'm only going for the motorcycle license. I, I hope never to drive a car <coughs> in my life. Uh, but I tool around town. The local cops have stopped me twice and asked to see my license. And both times they assumed my new Mexico license was from the country of Mexico. <laughs> and uh, they said both times, yeah, you, you need to get a license. And the second time he said, if we catch you a third time, you'll go to jail. Did they find you? No, but he's, the second time there was this awkward silence where I think he was waiting for me to offer him a tip or something, but we were outside on the road I, in daylight. I didn't want to be handing money to a cop on the side of the road. And uh, I thought, since they had set up this roadblock right outside the police station, he would say, come inside and speak to me. And we would step inside and do the thing, and then I'd come out and go on my way. But we both just sat there smiling at each other for about 30 seconds, and then he said, bye. And, Long and silence. Went. Yeah, he, I think he figured I was too dumb to know, which I was. I didn't know what was going on. Welcome this week to Grumpy Old Men, coming to you from the Tan Lung Jail. Yeah. 
<laughs> and here's a file and a chocolate cake. The Blues Brothers. Yeah. Oh, by the way, we're in um, Chateau Newton today. Yes, or Tim's house. Uh, because, because. Just because. Yes, just because. Just because we can. Look at this. It's a beautiful environment. Uh, now, it is. We could hang perfect. some some efficient lighting instruments from this grid. You've got a grid. We, we could hang some lighting instruments, and then I wouldn't look. Uh, dusky. Yeah, it's weird because we are both sitting in the same light. In fact, I've got one light pointing at Steve, yeah. but his complexion just sucks in the light. My natural ruddiness. Mm. Yeah. I don't know why that is. And I'm sort of, you know, clear and uh, of uh, n n Nordic complexion. Yeah, he's pretty pale. He's shiny, all right. Uh, anyway, yeah. just imagine Steve is brighter than he actually looks. When I say, when People I say, have been doing that forever. Yeah. When I say brighter, I'm talking about <laughs> the glasses. light. They light. think I'm smart because I wear glasses. So uh, you have to go back to Pangar and mm. finish your test. Yeah, tomorrow is the, uh, the classroom and testing portion. <clears throat> I did the driving test yesterday, and uh, that was a lot of fun. You chase a young lady on a motorcycle through a course. Oh, you've done that before. Yeah. and uh, Well, yeah. And this time nobody was calling the cops or her mom. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, that was fun. And then they took my money, 3,500 baht, and they said, come back Saturday. And then Tuesday, come back again, just to take the picture at the, the Department of Land Transport. So I will know the road between here and Panga very well by the time this is all over, but I will have a, uh, a shiny new license when it's done. And uh, that's one thing off the list. So Panga to you is a uh, hernia operation mm. and motorcycle license. It's the big smoke. It's the big city. Yeah. 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 And noodles. They're very famous for their noodles. I had what was probably the worst steak in my life. Uh, and I'm not going to say where, but the thing was overcooked. Now I'm from Iowa and we eat steak in Iowa and we've got a cow or two. And uh, I know a good cut of meat. My grandfather was a butcher. And uh, yeah, this was not a good cut of meat. I don't well, know what Thailand's buffalo. Thailand's not well known for its No, it's steak not. Is. But I mean, yeah. there were only two Falang items on the menu, a steak and a salmon steak. Do they have a McDonald's in uh, the... No, they have a KFC. But we have a KFC here in Koh Uh But no, they have no, no other fast food. They have pizza but it's the Thai version of pizza. It's got weird things that you would never expect on a pizza and, and I just, I never order it. So yeah, it was, it was noodles. They're famous for their guitio. They have really good guitio there. And I ate a lot of guitio and I will eat more. I'll be back there tomorrow and I'll be back there on Tuesday. So you didn't have the sort of fishing trails on red curry pizza? No, I saw that. The green curry, uh, uh, yeah, no, I, the green curry fish entrails. No, I've never tried that. I've never seen it. Your report said that mm. is the signature dish of the South. I, well, I, I've, I've seen it and I've tried it once. I'd rather suffer a month mm. of durian. This, that was pretty pungent. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's not one of those things I would have called common. Well, in, uh, maybe the far south. The, the Norwegian immigrants to the northern tier of states in the United States, uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, uh, North Dakota, South Dakota, brought a dish with them called Ludifisk, which is fish that I think you, you, you find a fresh corpse and you fill his belly with fish entrails and you bury him for a year. It's like kimchi fish and you dig him up and, and oh my God, it is the most, and they have it at every wedding, every, every engagement party, yeah. every, kind, yeah. every Boy Scout meeting. You've been warned. Yeah, you've yeah. got to eat some lutefisk and it's the most slimy, disgusting stuff. And I apologize to my Norwegian viewers, both of you. If you but, get uh, invited uh, to weddings, it, you want to, yeah. a Greek wedding is by far oh, the best. Okay. Yeah. You've got to pay your way in because you, when, <laughs> when you go and you've got to stick uh, yeah. you know, a hundred dollar note to a dress or something, but, and you walk in and there's, uh, in the entrance there, there's refrigerators and flat screen TVs <laughs> and uh, vouchers for holiday cruises. And then you get to throw the plates around. Wow. Um, I remember I sort of went and I, I was saying, when does the plate throwing start? Yeah. So I, you, you'll know when. And then somebody yeah. at the front went, ka-ching with the plate. And I went, now oh, here we go. So I went, whoosh with the plate. 
And the waiter came up and said, no, that's the Royal Dalton, sir. It's not the... Yeah. It's not the... Uh, not the throw in China. The, the celebratory <laughs> <Yeah>. plates. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, here's your bill, yeah. sir. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the Royal Dalton smashes really well on those concrete <laughs> floors, let me tell you. Yeah. Well, it's quality. You know quality. Yeah. So, uh, okay, we haven't had any pre-production time at all. Mm -hmm. Steve's got his pen ready. Apparently, you've got a few things to talk about. I'll check things off. Uh, I've had a really, really busy week, um, partly because I sort of semi-broke a story and everybody's up in arms about it and everybody's contacting me saying, oh, I knew this and I knew that and I'm trying to sort of go through the alleged and what's bullshit and what's real and um, had the honorary consulate general calling me on the time. You will never hear me use the word alleged. And I've got uh, four, no, two very good friends here for four days. Mm. And I've been taking them around. Sure, and, as one um, does. Yeah. And it's been great sort of seeing this lovely area I now get to live in <clears throat> uh, through the eyes of people who've uh, only been to Thailand once or twice. So it's really been a, a lovely week apart from catching up with good friends. Now, I sent you a photo this morning of a, it was a story about some beautiful blue lake in yeah, Tang A, yeah. a famous Thai tourist attraction. Yeah. I'm thinking to myself, maybe I should consult the oracle of Pang A locations, and you'd never heard of it. Never, and I Googled it, and I found more of that same article saying that they have found some kind of fissures on the edge of the lake, and they've closed it all off. It's a cave with a lake, and it used to be a quarry. There's all the European trees lining yeah, it. And, and, and the various outlets, various news sources called it the same thing and reported the same story. Uh, but the place itself, Google Maps has never heard of it. I've never heard of it. Uh, regular Google has never heard of it. I used all the pillows behind Just me. Just a bit of color, I thought. Hold me up. The theming going on. And uh, yeah, more light background. So Steve really pops. <laughs> It's, uh, at any rate, no, I, I've never heard of it. And We've I got to still hunt it down. Heard of it. Yeah, I don't, uh, I mean, Panga Town itself, I shot my show this week in a temple in a cave. Well, and, you and your film crew. Uh, me and my crew, me and a stray dog. That stray dog was real interested in my feet. Uh, but, you know, they've got, because they've got all these limestone cars, right? It's the, beautiful this, town. Yeah, this, the town. And it, you never get lost in Taimung, I mean, in Panga, because you can always look up and there's the various cars that you know by name. And so you know where you are in town. Simply look above the, the ceilings, up above the roofs. Uh, but all those cars have caves all through them. And uh, there's various temples and shrines set up in caves. There's lakes outside. There's one that's got full of like a thousand wooden elephants and yada, yada, yada. But this one I had never heard of it's and sort of neither a, has Google Maps. It's a bright turquoise blue lake. It's obviously mm -hmm. got some sort of copper or chemicals in it that it's uh, infused and to make the color this, the, the water this amazing color. But we've got to track it down. Now I'm sort of right. fascinated. I don't even remember the name. It's got Tom in it. Well, you've got nothing to do tum. during the week, so you can do yeah. that. Yeah. To get on your bike and just go on every single road. Uh huh. Sure, I'll do that. Yeah. yeah. Good. Check. Yeah. Come back Main in, Street. in six months and uh, tell us what you find. Okay. All right. All right, sir. On my way. Okay. To your first topic, Steve, as we go to Norell's notebook. Well, oh, we're going to start. God! We're going to start with Steve got it wrong. Oh, well, yeah. half an hour ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This week, there's a lot of Steve got it wrong. Uh, a name of the rose. I had said that. Uh, I had said, <laughs> yes. I think, quote, uh, find me one person who's ever read, the, who's ever finished Name of the Rose. You can't. Nobody finishes that book. A hundred people later. Oh, 150 easy. 300. Yeah, everybody who watches this show has read Name of the Rose. Uh, mea culpa. Uh, oh, many, many in Thailand. Ampe and Tambon share a name. I had said that I thought that ours was the only place where a village, mm. a tambon, and an ampe share a name, this being Thai Mung. Turns out, A, my village is not called Thai Mung. It is called Chai Hat, which means beach. Uh, it apparently, under Toxin, all sorts of things were rearranged and things got new names. So everybody I talked to who's been calling this uh, uh, Mu Ban Gao, the ninth village, calling it uh, uh, hot Thai Mung or Thai Mung Beach. 
No, that's an old name apparently, and and the officialdom doesn't use it anymore. But why don't we just go <clears> up there and say, look, just face it, it needs to be renamed Turtle Beach. Sure. Just get over it. Well, if I'm going to make that effort, I'm going to ask for hot satay, Steve's Beach. Uh, but what interested <laughs> that's just me? That's a little bit selfish. A little bit selfish. Well, that's a new one for me. Usually, it's very selfish. Well, you can do that after you found the turquoise lake. Okay, after I find the turquoise yes, lake. Yes. We're all about geography today. Uh, but what interested me about that is that some, I'm not going to say many of, but some of the people who corrected me did so in a tone of voice that implied you're an idiot for asking, Steve. You're an idiot for not knowing that that's common which I think is just something we've all developed now on the web. We tend to come back with snark. Uh, we're snide, we're, 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 we're passive aggressive with each other. And, you know, I simply, yeah, I made a mistake. Okay, correct me and I'll mea culpa, but, but you don't need to put that, that snark. But in it's your always comments. in a way that they would never address mm. you personally like no. that, in face no. to face. So I always find, um, and of course, 90% of these profiles, the name they're using is just yeah. sort of a made up profile name. And I just think it's very cowardly when they get stuck mm -hmm. into you. They know who you are. They know your face. How could you forget it? Right. And, yeah. uh, where I live, my front door opens all my videos. You see where I am on the beach. There's only houses on one side of this beach. There's only one time on beach. It's a dead end. You, you have to, there's only one road. And my house is decorated with trash off the beach. You, you know everything about me, and you're going to come with some stupid avatar and some stupid made-up name. You're a coward with a keyboard. Yeah, cowards with keyboards. Now, nobody, nobody was, like, abusive, but there was this kind of Oh, I could voice. lend you a few. Could you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, there was this kind of tone of voice which said, you know, oh, I think less of you because you've made this mistake. And I think that's something we, we got to get past. Let's keep things civil. Yeah. I disagree by all means, but there's ways and means. Now, uh, that's, that's it for Steve got it wrong, unless you have something, in which case, please, in the, in the comment section. I'm sure I'll say some shit today oh, that needs correction. No doubt. That's kind of my thing. Yeah, I get everything right, of course. I, shall I go on? Shall uh, I keep well, going? Yeah. Go on. Uh, Somebody said uh, in the comments the last week's show, oh no, uh, I commented on somebody's video, a creator's video, and he came back with, I would never criticize another creator. Really? Why not? The only reason anybody goes to art school is to hear the opinions of other artists. You can read books in the library. You can go to galleries. If you go to art school, it's because you want the opinions. You want a workshop. So... If we offer constructive criticism, mine's always constructive. Hmm. If it's usually just spelling errors that you can correct in your headline without affecting your views or your subs. But it's uh, uh, the idea that we shouldn't criticize other creators is bogus. Of course, of course. It's, and, and please criticize me. I read every comment. I love the intention. 1993, somebody threw a dead, a dead dog on my lawn because of something I wrote in the Nation newspaper. And, you know, that was flattering. I still, I still think about that. Somebody I was so dog? moved. Oh, it was quite dead. They, oh, okay. they found still dead? dead dog. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. As far as I know. Right. Now, I haven't seen that dog in 30 years. But, you know, what I'm saying, uh, uh, criticism from any quarter, uh, listen to it. So somebody's gonna, everybody can teach you something. I mean, the thing is, you, you're of a... <clears throat> dare I say, a, a veteran of uh, literacy and writing, and mm. you are entitled to pass an opinion. Uh, we should also remember that any time you go and see uh, a, a play, the next day the, there's a critique on... Uh, In the newspaper. Uh, the, the, the lead was good and the, the, yeah, the other lead that. was shit and they didn't like the costumes, loved the music. I mean, that's, yeah. uh, that's what happens. Every play. I did a production of Man and Superman by George Bernard Shaw in Memphis, Tennessee in 1981. Well, and faster than a speeding bullet Superman? We did it. Well, Man and Superman, the Ubermensch, it was a, a philosophical concept oh, from right. Goethe, from who? From, from Klickenspiel? I don't know. But it was an idea that there is like the id, the ego, and the superego. 
there's man, there's developed man, and then there's the Superman, and we are developing to the Superman. Is it a musical? Blah, blah, blah. No, 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 it's George Bernard Shaw. It's a novel that you pr perform on stage. Shaw, I think, is a terrible playwright, but don't quote me. Uh, but at any rate, we had uh, 25 people in the cast. It's a huge, huge, epic thing. Five acts. You give any audience four intermissions to get up and walk out. <laughs> we never, ever, I think we ran that show three weeks, uh, six performances a week. We never had more than 25 people in the audience clapping at the end of the show. We had more people on stage than we had in the audience. That is a critique. When somebody gets up and walks out at intermission, sure. or if they, they're clapping at the end is lip, uh, that's, that's a critique, man. And it's part of the artistic life, certainly in the theater. Yeah, if you know, you're a YouTuber, uh, you're not somehow immune to criticism. I mean, mm -hmm. generally, uh, most YouTubers are just uh, amateurs doing their mm -hmm. thing, yeah. uh, like us. Yeah, yeah. A and, but there are some people who are just cl clearly or comically bad or uh, humorous or, or almost inviting comment by whatever mm -hmm. they're posting. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're on YouTube, you're fair game. Goodness yeah. gracious, if I had a thin skin, I'd be, uh, uh, yeah. I'd be crying every morning, yeah. given some of the comments that people make. Aww, Somebody face. called me bald the other day. They said, no. I, they said I've got no hair. Oh my God, they're right. I had never noticed. Don't, don't remind no. me. Ha! <laughs> but uh, it, how's my hair today? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's, it's, it's part of the process and it's how you learn and putting it. I understand there's YouTubers out there who basically are doing this so the folks back home can watch their trip to Thailand. And that's great, I get that. And, and they're having fun and they're just filming what they eat and where they go and getting on the ferry, getting off the ferry, getting off the plane, getting back on the plane. And I get that, that's for your family, that's for your friends. You're not trying to build an audience. You're not trying to make any money, even so. You've put it in the public domain. You've asked people to watch it the, the forum gives us a little thumbs up or a thumbs down. They encourage feedback. There's a cell that says, write a public comment here. Uh, even in that case where you're just doing your, your photo slideshow for Uncle Harry back in Cincinnati, if there's something I see that I want to comment on, I'm going to comment on it. You know, you can send Harry this video in an email. You don't have to make it public. Once you make it public, Anybody who invests their time in watching even two minutes of it can comment. So, uh, yeah, th that guy, I'm sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep commenting. In inquiring about uh, your mother's health, I was going to ask, oh, uh, does she occasionally critique your videos? Critique my videos? Yeah. I grew up in a house alone with a middle school English teacher. You think I haven't been critiqued since the age of two on my writing, <laughs> on my speech, on my posture, yeah, yeah. on my clothes, yeah, on like my so grooming? Sorry. Oh, God, no. No, that's, yeah. I mean, yeah. And criticism, it's not, I mean, you learn from it. Everybody's got something to Tough teach love. You. And what they're saying is, I invested my time in your artistic product. I read your book. I, l I went to the gallery, looked at your painting. I listened to your symphony. That's a compliment. So it always starts with a compliment, even if they don't know they're complimenting you. By saying, I watched this product, yeah. they're saying, I've invested in your product. So it's not anything to get your panties in a twist about. Somebody criticizes you, either learn from it and roll with it or engage them and, and, and ask them why they think this or tell them why you thought it was better than that. Who was the vlogger? I can't recall the... Oh, no. Maybe it was part of the show. Oh, I you probably didn't see it. When you start it. talking, I no, don't No, 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 no. It's just some other vlogger. Uh, uh, I don't know. I look at 10, 15 vloggers a day. And uh, it was just some guy. And I said something. Probably, dude, you misspelled a word in your headline. Oh, right. It or wasn't in your me. description. You know, that's, that's typically... Because typically I only watch a couple minutes. But the description is there. And the thing is, a video, you can't change it without pulling it down. They'll let you bleep or blur faces or bleep words once it's published. But to pull it down and change something and bring it back up, you're starting all over in terms of views and subs. So something in the description, something that's just a, a grammatical error that's going to make you look like a yutz to anybody who reads that, I'll tell you so you can correct it. That edit doesn't affect your views and subs. You don't have to take the video down, put it back up. So I, I'll 
point out to people, you spelled the name of Trang wrong. And after I corrected it, he spelled it wrong again. Uh, you know, and I think that's fair game. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It, I'm, you know, it'll help improve your product. Moving on. Moving on. Athena Sword, viewer Athena Sword. I, I, that's, now, I don't know. I thought Athena Sword would be a woman. I'm, oh, I've always assumed it was. Sure. But some of the things that he or she, or they, have said to me in recent weeks made me suddenly think, maybe they're a guy. I'm not sure why, uh, Athena, Athena if that's your name. But I appreciate your comments. Uh, Athena typically is thoughtful and concise and uh, intelligent. She asks a question this time that I'll throw out to the brain trust. I think it's me. me. Well, you and the important people. Uh, she asks, how do you know it's true love in Thailand? <laughs> well, that, that question's been uh, asked for, for decades. Yes. And I personally have never experienced true love in Thailand or anywhere else. But you got so, married. Yes, I did. I personally have never experienced true love in Thailand or anywhere else. Uh, I have been in love with three women in my life. I don't think any of them reciprocated. That uh, 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 there's one woman in my life who I love dearly and always have, and we have gone in and out of the weird long distance relationships and hookups at Christmas break and things like that. Uh, Same time I, next year. Yes, exactly. And I think we love each other. Uh, I I I fell in love with that woman from behind her on the bus, uh, the the Benton Street bus in Iowa City when I was 15 and she was 13 and have loved her ever since that day. It's better to have but, loved and lost than yeah, never to have loved at all. Yeah, but our lives, we've never lived in the same city. We have never lived in the same city. So, but Athena Sword, uh, it's a great question. I, someone out there is gonna have to answer it. I have no experience with uh, true love, so I can't uh, help you out with that. Well, I mean, you could ask the question, not just in Thailand, but just generally. Uh, okay, The whole yeah. concept of love, uh, which is much written about and sung about, is perhaps just sort of some sort of biological illusion uh, which helps us uh, yeah. procreate and um, have more of the species. That's being very cynical. Mm. But uh, I, I can say that I have believed uh, and, and had very close relations three times in my life. And I'm, if I died tomorrow, I would have been one of the very lucky few who have had a, a, a true loving sort of a relationship. And in some ways uh, that, that, that may continue with some of the people. But um, yeah, I don't know how to answer that either. Yeah, uh, I, I it, follow your heart. Are there some uh, people in Thailand who would be inclined to disguise uh, what they're feeling for you as love yes. to make you part with a yes, certain amount the, of money. To proclaim uh, love when it's yeah, not really there. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and then how do you know? Um, yeah. Read a thousand vlogs and realize that the bar girl does not love you. Typically, I would say probably not. Yeah. I, I hate to deal in absolutes, so I won't say a bar girl cannot fall in love with a customer. Uh, but I think typically, generally, uh, uh, no, it's it's not love. It may, I mean, I'm, I've known guys who've been married to uh, uh, a bar girl, well, former bar girl for 20 or 20 plus years, and they've been happy. Both of them have been happy in that relationship. I don't know that what they're living with is, you know, the many splendored thing that Western culture paints love as it's not a romeo juliet relationship it might be a continuing of the transactional yeah. relationship that they're both happy with they're both happy with it they're very very comfortable in it they both profited from it and and good on them um, more power to them sure. that even just that is more than i have ever experienced in my life so so they're more successful than me yeah. ask them yeah i can't answer that for you uh, ms or mr sword uh, though Athena Sword's a terrific name. Sure. Athena, uh, please tell us um, a little bit. <laughs> Where are you from? And do, what gender are you, just in well, case? The, the, the profile picture is a very attractive young woman, I think. Oh, I haven't I seen think the so. profile yeah, picture. Yeah, I think. But there's nothing there. I think, uh, if I'm remembering right, the, there's nothing on the channel. It's just a channel that's used to, to, to leave comments, you know. 
Uh, but at any rate, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a good question. I don't know how to answer it. Maybe the brain trust out there, maybe some of you viewers have wow. experienced true love and you can give us the, 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 the markers for it. How do how we recognize do you know? it? Yeah. yeah. What color is its plumage? How Let do you know? know? Mm -hmm. well, somebody said, said last week, mm -hmm. we were talking about books being turned into movies and said, why don't you do a, uh, a, a whole musical thing of a version of, you know, uh, the, the famous musicals. I'm thinking, well, we're starting to veer off the track a little bit. Uh, we do talk about uh, pop culture and Western uh, writing from time to time, mm -hmm. and we may just uh, sort of recall or remember a movie, or a, 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 mm -hmm. a, but we're not really here to uh, critique uh, Rodgers and Hammerstein. Uh, their, no, their, their we would works. both enjoy doing that. Sure, sure. Uh, that is one of the things that we share. We share in common a, a, an appreciation of the canon of the American musical theater and other forms of performance art. And yeah, we, we, we veer into that yes. from time to time. There's none of that. I would love to review something here at the Junkyard Theater or at the Cot Theater or someplace else, uh, but I don't have the money or the, the uh, uh, transportation or the inclination. There's you want to go to Junkyard Theater? Yeah. I'll organize it for you. Oh, will you? Okay. Sure. Because it's very depressing to go to the theater alone. I don't mind eating alone at all. But going to a show, going to a movie or a oh, theater. Oh no, I much it, prefer to go by myself. Do you? Oh, I oh. want to sit in the back and just enjoy it. I don't want to have somebody going, oh, this part's yeah. good. Or um, eating your popcorn. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, pff, don't yeah. touch my popcorn. <laughs> so uh, no, I, I, I always in the cinema, I'll always go alone. Don't come to the cinema with me. <laughs> but I'll take you to the junkyard theater. I'll go and sit somewhere Oh, else all right, thank you. That yeah. would be great, I love that place. I'll give yeah. John a call. John, I've seen Zach. John and Zach. Yeah, remember Junkyard me? Junkyard Theatre. Remember me? The old prop guy? Remember me? Junkyard yeah. Theatre, Junkyard Theatre, Junkyard Theatre. Anton Phuket. Yeah. Uh, it's, I've, I've been the in the house. On the bypass road. I've, I've had the food. The food was excellent. It's a restaurant theatre. Uh, I don't know if they do legit uh, dinner theatre where you yeah, eat. Yeah, they do. As you watch. You oh, yeah, yeah, as yeah. You watch. Okay. And you, sort of, but the you have your entree, then they have Act 1, and then the, uh, the main comes out, and then there's Act 2. So you're not eating oh, while they're performing. I see. Okay. Oh, it's very good. Awesome. Very, yeah. I yeah. think, John, Zach, one yeah. ticket. Thank yeah. you. Comp. Yeah, I'm press. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, have we beat that uh, theatrical yes. horse to death? All right. Uh, I've got a couple red flags, and these oh, were yes. sent these to me via email. They weren't in the comments, so you won't have heard these. But this is uh, turning into, someone just drove into your driveway in a white car. Yeah, that's the customer, Steve. Oh, okay. Yeah, by the way, uh, it looks like you've got a triffid growing out of your ears. I, I, just, I told you to clean your ears. I, I just watched that movie. Boy, what a terrible movie that is. Day of the Triffids? Yeah, Day of the Triffids. They tried to, I have, didn't know they tried to make it. Remake it, you mean? Oh, I, I, I read the book. Oh, the John Winder book. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, back in the... 50s, it's black and white, uh, late 50s, early okay. 60s, and it's just awful. It's just awful. Speaking of Poor uh, John books Wyndham, and he, could, he just couldn't get a good treatment. So red flags, uh, and this is turning out to be a very popular segment. Uh, one is, where'd I lose it? Oh, when a bar girl shows you her phone, she wants you to see something on her phone. She's lying to you. She's showing you a photograph of some random person in a hospital bed, and she says, I didn't show up for our date last night because my friend fell off her motorcycle. I have to go stay in hospital with her. Oh, that's nice. See you yeah, later. Yeah, I hope she gets better. Or it's a picture of her at a funeral, and you don't know whose picture that is. You don't know whose casket that is, but, oh, my mother just died, and I need 20,000 baht, or we don't have money to burn the body. They'll throw her in the river if we don't, you know. If a bar girl lets you look at her phone, because typically she won't, of course she won't. She's got 16 other guys lining her, and she's not going to let you, you know, go through her phone and see what she's saying to everybody. You might think as she's sort of leaning over with the phone, she's about to show you some sort of yeah. anatomical photo. In my experience, that would be unlikely. But my experience of that world predates phones. Anything I have to say about that. Uh, for the most part, predates the cell phone. But I have noticed, as, as, long, as with this contributor of this question, uh, that they'll keep a library of photos on their phone of death, doom, and disease uh, to back up lies. And the buffalo uh, before the it got sick. The sick buffalo. And yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And here's uh, a picture of my brother. 
there's one more red flag. Who's the husband? Oh, this comes from me. I'm glad you're listening, Steve. If his Facebook page is full of photos of the two of them together and declarations of his undying love, her Facebook page doesn't have any photos of him, mm. doesn't mention him. Mm. It's her family, it's her friends, <clears throat> maybe work. Maybe there's a picture of her in a parka skiing in the Alps, and he would be the one who took her to the Alps. Unless it's something special and big and huge like that, a trip abroad, a car, he bought her a car. Typic, uh, if, and, and there's plenty of relationships where they both post pictures of each other, but if his Facebook page is loaded with pictures of her and her Facebook page has little or no, few or no pictures of him, your customers are here, photobombing. Uh, that's a red flag. The key, he has no key. Oh, okay. You get, uh, I'll handle this. Are you sure? <laughs> what, you think I'm not capable? How now, Thersites? What lost in the labyrinth of thy fury? Excuse me, whatever happens in the next two or three minutes, I have no responsibility yeah. for. Hey, you just you, behave yourself. Brain trust. Do you think do you think this this rash is gonna oh. go Oh <laughs> Oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> it's all gone to hell now. Look, suddenly I'm lit. You can see my face. What did we do? Look at this. Yeah, Steve's not hiding in the shadows anymore. Oh, now I am. Oh, okay, lean forward. That's what does it. Anyway, uh, let me throw out another uh, question here for the brain trust. So I, I saw a guy this week, and he, he had two parts. His video had two parts. The first part was complaining bitterly about the smoke in Chiang Mai. And why can't the governments of the West pressure the Thai government, the Lao government, and the Khmer government to stop all these farmers burning their, their, their shrubbery. The second half of his video was, you know this climate change thing is all bollocks, right? So for, on one hand, he's complaining about something that is literally climate change. And on the other hand, he's, he's saying that it doesn't exist. My question is, when in the historical record, and I know we've got the Peter Montalbanos out there, we've got the Noah Shepherds who do the research before they comment, and uh, we've lost the tops of our heads. I'm uh, fixing up all the things you've ruined. So my question is, when I lived here, I took my honeymoon in 1993 uh, to Chiang Mai. We spent six weeks in Chiang Mai. Now it was January, not the burning season. But I don't remember back in the 80s and 90s ever hearing about smog in Chiang Mai. When did, when did this problematic smog enter the public record, the historical record, in the north of Thailand? I, I think that it's, it's been there to varying degrees in the past, but it's accelerated perhaps over the last decade and then been amplified by the fact that they've got all the monitoring stations and there okay. are now 10 websites which uh, share that information that are publicly available. So okay. you've got a sort of a number and a red circle uh, rather than, oh, gee, it's a bit smoggy today. Maybe. Maybe it's a matter of more uh, reporting. You know, like the, the people who say, oh, young people now in the West, uh, they're all crazy. This, you know, looking at their phones all day or whatever it is, vaping, whatever, it's made them all crazy. Look at the statistics, how, how young people these days go seek mental health help. Well, no, the stigma has just been removed from seeking mental health. They've been raised, the current generation, at least in America, has been raised to think that mental health is like any other health. If you're having a problem, you go seek help. Just like you, you, you hurt your knee, you go seek help from a doctor for your knee. Mm. If you've got something going on up here, anxiety, depression, whatever, which I think, you know, in this day and age, there's a lot of anxiety and depression right here. Uh, it's a matter of reporting. There is more reporting now. So you think perhaps there's yeah. more reporting yeah. of a problem that's, that's... It's like people say, oh, things are much more violent these days. No, oh, the situation is there's cameras and people yeah. are recording those things, yeah. okay. which get loaded up onto social media. Oh, there's more fires. Well, because people have got a phone and they take a photo of the phone, there's a monitoring station and there's satellites which take photos. So we know and we can measure these things. Okay. But I think also... Uh, the, the, the rate of farming 
uh, because of the demand by the Thai population and business and exporting, uh, that there's more demand. I mean, CP, the, the, the huge multinational, has uh, got many thousands of these farmers on their books and they're uh, putting the, you know, they're putting the pressure on to produce more for less. And the burning of those uh, plantation crops to get ready for the next crop is the cheapest and fastest way to do it. It's certainly not the most environmental. So I think they're the reasons. Did I answer now, the question? Well, you, you, you have proposed some solutions. I want to hear what the Brain Trust says, but let me ask you uh, uh, this thing. You, you, when you report those, you call those little red dots forest fires. Is, and in America and in Australia, we have problems with literal uncontrolled naturally occurring yeah. forest fires is that part of it or is well, it all agriculture is it 50 50 30 70 i'd guess that's about 90 percent plantation deliberately lit plantation fires maybe 10 okay. percent agriculture fi fires that, uh, that that sort of got out of control 10 percent natural a and some okay. of them would be plantation f started as plantation fires that, and oh, then, there's the winds changed, and oh, the, the yeah. hills over there are they're now burning. So I, Sorry I, about your house, sunshine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think there's some of that. And again, it's another reason why, you know, fire is not necessarily predictable. Um, uh, and as we've seen uh, from the, 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 the maps on which you see on my program. Yes. Hi, by the way, this segment about the fires in uh, northern Thailand is brought to you by Kev in Thailand. <laughs> Uh, hey, Kev. What's we up? love you, Kev. What's up? Uh, and most, there's, the concentration is beyond the Thai border. And of course, the wind mm. blows in the wrong direction. And all that smoke is crossing the border. The smoke doesn't need a, a visa. It just mm. floats across yeah. those borders. Which the idea that uh, governments in the West could put pressure on the Khmer, the, 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 the uh, uh, Lao and the Burmese governments to stop uh, the, uh, the the agricultural burning is, is pretty silly. A, what, what would the farmers do with all that stuff? And, uh, you know, they can't all have a mulch machine. And, and guess who's buying mulch. a lot of those agricultural products? Yeah, the, the West. Western countries. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's, that's not a good solution. But for those of you academics out there who have the proper reference books, when does the problem of pollution in the north of Thailand uh, uh, this seasonal smoky air, when does that start? January, show? February. No, no, I mean, 10 years oh, ago, 20 okay. years ago, 30 oh. years ago, in The Seal of Tamatari, which is a lovely old book. It's kind of aged not well, I think. But The Seal of Tamatari is one of those great old Thai novels that every expat used to read and no longer does. It's about the La Na kingdom. La Na, a million fields, right? It's all agriculture up there. For several hundred years, it has always been agriculture up there. And so La Na, a million, uh, in this case, rice fields, rice paddies. Uh, I don't remember it being mentioned in that book that they, that back in the La Na kingdoms 300 years ago, that they were, they were you know, coughing in, in the month of April. So when does it appear? When does this start to become a problem? It's certainly, and also it's headline material because mm. on day after day when Chiang Mai ends up as the most polluted city in the world, that's a headline. And mm -hmm. obviously it's gonna be something that's more reported. And I, I keep on thinking, well, the more it's reported, the more likely it is that something will be done. I don't know what can be done. You optimist. Yeah, uh, but I mean, clearly, Chiang Mai and Chiang Rai and very beautiful parts of Thailand are parts I would avoid for four months a year mm -hmm. uh, because purely of health reasons. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, I, as you know, I avoid any place that's not this beach, <laughs> so I'm, I'm moot, my opinion on Except that is Except you've got to find the turquoise lake. Panga, yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to appreciate Panga. Uh, they have a movie theater. The movies are all in Thai, but I have not been in a movie theater in years and years and years. And I oh, might just in the Pangar Township. Yeah. Oh, okay. In the Big C supermarket, it's upstairs. Okay. And uh, they'll have four. I think there's four theaters, four screens, and they're all you know Thai romance dramas or Chinese gangster flicks or something, uh, or um, I, I think they sometimes have you know uh, foreign movies in uh, in Thai. In Thai. So uh, I might just go in there to sit in air conditioning for I, two hours and watch I, I've show. gone to see a few Thai movies. No, sorry, uh, big 
blockbuster movies, and I've made the mistake sometime by going into the Thai language audio cinema rather than the mm. English one with the Thai subtitles, which is what I would typically go to. But you stay in there because the people who they use to do the Thai dubbing to an English-speaking or any other language-speaking movie is the same four people yeah. who do all the voices. And yeah. the, 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 there's the older guy, and there's the older woman, and there's the younger guy, and it's the same four people that do all the characters. Yeah. And you can hear, well, it's the same guy who was yeah. speaking. Oh, he's the guy with the sword. No, he's a... <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's quite amusing. But there's, I think there's four Thai actors who can, well, obviously read the script, who get all the work, and they're making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Uh, and with that... Uh-uh, oh, I got one more. It's a quick one. I want to ask the Brain Trust. This is a question for next week. When you go home, what's weird? For me, it's portion sizes. Oh, the, yes. The amount of food Americans put on a plate is obscene. Reflected by the size of a lot of well, American people that, walking around the streets. Yeah, one, and, and I didn't, I was hesitated to bring that up because there are large people now in Thailand as well. But going back to Minneapolis, or going flying in through Minneapolis, the Minneapolis airport, after seven years in Thailand, my ex-wife and I sat there in that waiting lounge, and we were both flummoxed by how big everybody was in the airport. And I don't mean muscular and, and, and stocky. I mean, there was a lot of clinical obesity going on. And that was 1997. Now it's worse. I flew, uh, I had to do a quick trip to America in 2004, 2005. Uh, it was called, I was working for an ophthalmologist conference and I did around the world in seven days, I think it, we, we called the segment. I think they just released uh, the latest version of Around the World in 70 Days or whatever the movie's called. 80. Uh, okay, so it was Around the World in eight days. Oh, and okay. I visited eight ophthalmologists around the world. Oh, neat. And, and did interviews with them about this and that and whatever the, I was neat. told to. And I had to go to Cincinnati mm -hmm. to meet Dr. Bobby Osher. Hi, Bobby, if you're still around. Uh, who's a very very good ophthalmologist and uh, quite a character as well. Loves chocolate. What? Yes. Number one. Bobby. Or he, number two. Here is a good. Number uh, one or number two. Sorry. Is go there on, a number Bobby. three? No. It's always one or two. <laughs> uh, but Bobby, this would be a, a very challenging case for you. But uh, I I remember arriving in Cincinnati and walking down the street, and that was the first thing I noticed. I thought, Oh my God, these people are huge. Yeah. It's a problem. And, uh, and yeah, I don't think it's getting any better. So that's the question. For me, the weirdness, uh, at least one of the weirdnesses, is uh, the size of portions of food. What's weird for you when you go home uh, to visit? Uh, what, what strikes you as unusual when you go home? Well, I'm glad you asked, Steve. Um, hey, Tim, when you go home to, where is it? Where are you from? Australia. Australia. Oh, God, everything's weird in Australia. <laughs> yes. What do you, they got these animals with pockets and shit? What, what's not weird in Australia? It's called a pouch. A pouch. Ew. Uh, so, Lucania. last time I was there, uh, what was weird? Um, the internet I just found much, much slower. And to get a, <laughs> like a card for your phone, because I was like a tourist. Yeah. When I went there, I, I thought it's very expensive and very slow. That I found weird for a you know, first world country, uh, allegedly. And uh, also the fact that when you drive on the roads, they've got such sophisticated speed cameras now, which are not there for safety. They're there to raise money. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're revenue raising. Yeah, sure. And they've got the camera there and the camera like 10 kilometers down the road and the camera works out your average speed over that 10 kilometers and immediately sends you a fine and i my and the, the car i was in uh, was flashing the speed limit at me it knew either by reading the signs or with satellite or i don't know and it was flashing at me the the speed limit which i was always over so uh, yeah, that I found that sort of weird. Well, weird in a, I hadn't been to the country for 10 years and uh, yeah. a few things had changed. What will happen to those speed cameras when the robots take over all the driving? 
when the cars are driving themselves, Ooh. are all those speed cameras put out of a job? Well, they send the, the fine send the to the, the to, robot. To, to uh, the car. Elon Musk, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, when both jobs That's are interesting. being... We'll just all stay home and let them fight it out, I think. When I see stories about car automation and I, I don't know what it's called, automated driving or something, but I'm not sure what you, what do you call the phenomenon of self-driving cars? All right. There we go. We'll go with that. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking, okay, this might work in some countries, might work in Europe on the autobahns, might work in America. It will never work in Thailand. No. Never, ever, no, ever. I don't think so. No AI is going yeah. to be able to predict the behavior no. of a Thai motorcyclist. Uh -uh. We have the big four-way intersection here. <laughs> See at me fi dang, ki mai me fi dang. The four-way intersection with a red light that doesn't have a red light. Unmarked, no stop signs, no flashing yellow lights, no red light, nothing. It's a big four-lane intersection, tons of traffic, and it's not marked. And What's you your have to rule? Feel your way when you go there. What do you think? What, what What are your well, cues prayer to go? first? I say a prayer <laughs> yes, coming up on yes, it. Yes. Uh, I have, if it's too busy, I'll just make the left, go down, do oh, a U-turn. Yes, do oh a U-turn, come God. back from the other way. Uh, sometimes it's too busy and I'm too uh, unsure of what to do. And uh, the rest of the time, I mean, about half the time you'll come up to it and there won't be any traffic that's obstructing. You just fly right through it. Sure. But the other half of the time, man, you're flying by the seat of your pants. It's all gut. And uh, that 16-year-old girl with her four-year-old brother on that motorcycle, you don't know what the hell she's going to decide to do. And AI would never know what the hell she's going to decide to do. So, no, I, I agree with you. I don't think it will ever work here. Let me no. tell you, uh, my rule at that intersection, and I go through it, I don't know, once, twice, three times a day on a motorcycle or a car, uh, I've become a little bit bullish. I think that everybody stands there and waits. So I'm always the one that goes first. And I, I sort of never stop. I just keep on moving yeah. so they, they see my intention. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the red flashing lights on the top of the car also uh, help. <laughs> Being chased by a car, yeah. Yeah, no one's gonna get in your But uh, it, it's yeah. a funny intersection. I think the rule is give way to the left, but the tires don't know that. Yeah. I, I only No, sort of, but there doesn't seem to be uh, any rule no, it's at, just, at all. And it's the main road from yes. Phuket to Ranong and Suratani. Yeah. Tons of traffic. It's I know six lanes on either side of the town. And it funnels down to two lanes so, yeah. with a hard right turn with, that's not marked. I notice the people that come are coming from Phuket down the street to make that uh, right hand turn to Kalak, they always assume they've got right of way. They just mm -hmm. I'm turning and nothing's going to stop me. Usually on an intersection without it, the people turning would have to wait for the people going straight ahead. No, 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 not. Yeah, I think there is a, a school of thought that if we are on the main highway, the 4044, from Phuket to Ranong, we have right of way. The other two directions are, uh, the other two roads are little local roads. And I think there is a, pre certainly with the buses and the big trucks, that we're on the main road, we're, we're working, we're on our way, and we're just going to go through and you're going to have to wait for us. Yeah, I'm in a, uh, a passenger van, you're in a sedan, so yeah, I have right that. of way. Yeah, Mike makes bigger. right, Mike makes right. Yeah, yeah hell yeah. Uh, and with that, can we go now? Yes, sure. Uh, it's time to wind up. Steve has his own YouTube channel. Thank you. And it's Steve Ross with an E. And you can learn all sorts of things you probably didn't think you need to know. No by watching Steve's channel. Probably don't need to know. Um, please subscribe to my channel. Um, mm -hmm. I was gonna say we'll be back tomorrow with Grumpy Old Men, but... This is Grumpy th Old This men. is Grumpy yeah. Old Men. So I'll be back tomorrow with the daily news program. And uh, from the duck, Bob, mm -hmm. from me. And from me, thanks for watching. Bye.